College football is back and Mark Rogers TV is breaking down each BCS conference race and also rating the conferences. We've got the Big East at 6, the ACC at 5, the Big 12 at number 4, the Pac-12 at number 3, and at number 2, the Big 10. Why the Big 10 at number 2? You'll have to watch our last edition where we also broke down the leaders division. On to the legends division. Highlighted by Nebraska, the Huskers come into Big Ten play wanting to prove that they belong. They will get everybody's A game. So a key to this season is the quarterback play of Taylor Martinez, a run-first quarterback who passed for 1,600. He ran for 900. When he's not keeping it, he hands it off to the reliable Rex Burkhead, who ran for just under 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns. The Huskers do have trouble against elite defenses. Look at the last two Big 12 championship games. But on the other side of things, the black shirts don't give up a whole lot on defense. Highlighted by their two great ends, seniors Levante David and also Jared Crick. Especially Crick, maybe the best in the country at his position. Nine and a half sacks in 2010 and also 17 tackles for loss. We go to Iowa City where Kirk Ferentz stands as one of the best coaches in college football. He takes good talent and turns in close to great results most seasons, although the Hawkeyes were primed for a big 2010 and let everyone down with eight wins and five losses. But this season, we've got James Vandenberg at quarterback. He's been waiting for Ricky Stancy to get out of the way. Ever since he walked on the field in relief of Stancy in 2009 in the de facto Big Ten championship game in Columbus and turned in a gutsy, great effort against the Buckeyes, losing in overtime. It certainly wasn't his fault. A lot of dropped passes for the Hawkeyes on that day. Vandenberg takes over at quarterback. He's got a good one to hand off to in the backfield. And Marcus Coker, one of the best in the Big Ten, and in front of Coker, probably the best offensive line in the Big Ten in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes solid on defense, led by cornerback Sean Prater. Now let's move on to Michigan. A lot of changes there. Not just the head coach, the Rich Rod era is over. Brady Hoke takes over in Ann Arbor, but also brings two new coordinators with him. On defense, Greg Madison comes in from the Baltimore Ravens, a good place to find a defensive coordinator, and the defense has to get better. A few reasons why. Rich Rod did recruit pretty well. Madison's a great coach. And thirdly, the defense just really can't get any worse giving up 211 plays of plus 10 yards last season. That was the third worst in college football. Now let's turn to the offense where Al Borges takes over as offensive coordinator. What he's going to try to accomplish is establish a power Michigan running game without compromising the tremendous talents of quarterback Denard Robinson, the Heisman Trophy candidate, put up Incredible numbers last year, 4,300 total yards and 32 touchdowns. That's the story in Michigan in year one of the Brady Hoke era. Michigan State, just about everything went right for the Spartans in 2010, at least until New Year's Day and that shellacking by Alabama 49-7. There were the improbable comeback wins against Northwestern and Purdue late in the fourth quarter, the fake field goal that they pulled off against Notre Dame in overtime, and Michigan State did not have to face the Ohio State Buckeyes in 2010. Coming back is quarterback Kirk Cousins, possibly the best, along with Dan Persa at Northwestern in the Big Ten. Cousins is surrounded by very reliable, experienced players in the skilled positions on offense for Michigan State, but really nothing dynamic. Those dynamic uh, outside threats for Michigan State have moved on to the NFL in recent years, and Edwin Baker the most dynamic player that Michigan State has on offense last year with 1,300 yards and 13 TDs. Michigan State's defense should be solid, but they lose two tremendous linebackers in Greg Jones and Eric Gordon, two of the best in the country. But Jarrell Worthy is a D-tackle, NFL worthy, and also the cornerback Johnny White has NFL scouts drooling as well. The Spartans will be tough on defense. This is how the Legends division shapes up. Nebraska wins it as they win head-to-head -head against Iowa, just like the Ohio State Buckeyes will take the leaders division in a bit of an upset over Wisconsin 
as the Buckeyes get the Badgers late in October at home. And by that time, we expect the Buckeyes to have worked out their quarterback issues and also to have assimilated those four key offensive players back from suspension. The Huskers defeat the Buckeyes in the regular season. But in the rematch, much like Washington did to Nebraska last year, losing, getting annihilated in the regular season, then winning the bowl game, the Buckeyes defeat the Huskers to win the first Big Ten championship game. Until then, the Big Ten must prove itself against non-conference competition. No real must-see games this year like we had last year with Ohio State and Miami. What we do have are some interesting matchups. Of course, we've got the Big Ten against Notre Dame, as we typically do, Michigan, Michigan State, and Purdue. Ohio State does get a rematch with Miami after winning that game in Columbus last year. The Buckeyes have to go without those suspended players at Miami in Game 2. But, of course, the Hurricanes have suffered their own problems and own suspensions as well. We've got Wisconsin taking on Oregon State. And before you dismiss that game, remember, Arizona State came into Madison in 2010 and almost pulled off a shocker against the Wisconsin Badgers, who, of course, eventually went on to the Rose Bowl. We also have an interesting game with Iowa taking on Pitt. And again, it's Ohio State and Miami as well. That's the Big Ten story. We like Ohio State over Nebraska in the championship game. And again, the Big Ten Conference is the second best in college football. Mark Rogers TV will present the best conference in college football coming up next.